Okay, so in this video, I'm going to continue going over the practice questions for grade 12 advanced. This is the next topic, which is all about charging and electric fields. So let's see what we have here. We have a diagram showing the steps a student takes to charge. This whole process is called induction. Fine. The idea here is, ew, black. Let me change that to red, a good teacher's color. Yes, if this comes near without touching, and then you ground it, that is induction. Induction means without touching. If it was to touch, if I brought this and it touched it, that would have been conduction. The electrons would have perhaps transferred onto this balloon, for example. Grounding itself, you might think, why did I not choose grounding? Well, grounding is this specific step. This is grounding. If I had this, maybe electrons will come up to the ground, from the ground, doesn't matter which way. But the point is, this is the grounding, this part here. And that's if it asks you step two, what is it? Finally, just so you know, friction itself is rubbing. If I took this balloon and rubbed it against this rod, then you could call friction. That just means rubbing. So as you can see, this is induction. Very nice. Now, in this case, we have a metal rod, and it's brought here... Well, I don't know if it's metal rod, it's just a rod, but it's close to a sphere. And we have protons over here. Draw and explain. So if I was to draw it, you would have to polarize them. You would have electrons attracted to it. Originally, they were neutral. And the protons will remain on the other side. I chose those words carefully. They remain on the other side because protons do not move. I've mentioned it time and time again. Protons do not move around. They are fixed in place. It's the electrons that move. They attract or they repel. So that's what we will say. The negative charges will get attracted to the rod and leaving the positive charges at the far end. Please don't say the positives move to the other side. Don't say something like that. So only electrons move. Then once we realize that we have polarize this we can see what happens when you connect it to the ground well let me just draw it here again for you so we had the minuses here pluses here in this case you need to decide whether the electrons are going to go down or up so the ground is a sea of electrons and a sea of protons no problem now as soon as you connect it to the ground they can see what's happening over here they can see that there are many pluses here the electrons get excited and they want to join the party. The electrons will come up to these pluses and neutralize with these. They will come up and join here. Then that means I have extra electrons here, right? If I then disconnect the ground, the electrons are now stuck. I have a negative charge now. So I have explained it and you can write that as well through the bulk unbalanced positive charge it just says it's neutralized by the electrons you can just simply say electrons come up from the ground uh, and because they're attracted to the positive charges on the right hand side and marking the direction i've just mentioned the direction if this was a negative one it will be the opposite of what we have just said if i had a negative rod i would polarize with pluses remaining here and negatives over here and once I connect it to the ground, now these electrons have a chance to run away even further. They will go down to the ground. They will run away. These electrons will run away, leaving me with a positive charge. One thing to know is, well, this will just be the same thing. That's, this stays as minus and overall minus. Fine. But one thing to note is I'll give you a little tip here for the charging. If it's induction, induction, that was a terrible eye, induction, the final charge on the other side, the final charge, you've noticed, look at this, this was a positive rod, I ended up with a negative charge. Positive rod ended up with a negative charge. Induction is opposite charge. The final charge, they will be opposite. Opposite. If you had conduction, why did I start with the, the letter D? Conduction, just so you know. Uh, when they touch and separate, the final charges are same charge, same charge. Opposite charge, same charge. And friction, well, if you remember friction, this is what's happening when they rub together. Electrons are shaken off and moved over. They transfer, which means the final charge will also be opposite. So something to keep in mind for future reference. Okay. Next, we are looking at quantization of charge. Which of these is not a possible value for the net charge of an object? And we have one uh, point 0.6, this is E. 
So if you want to figure out the relationship between them, let's have a look at our trustee formula sheet. And we're looking for this, and it looks like we're not doing electricity anymore, so let's scroll down a little. We're looking for quantization of charge. It doesn't seem to be given to us Q equals NE, which is a bit unfortunate for you. So that means we just need to remember it. The idea here is that the charge of a single electron is 1.6. You can either have zero electrons, or one electron, or two electrons, or three electrons, nothing in between. You cannot have half an electron, a quarter of an electron. It's not possible. So that means I know that if I take one electron, I will have 1.6. If I take two electrons, I will have two times 1.6, 3.2 which is right here, that's actually correct. That's a good answer. I mean, it's not the one we need. We want, that's not possible. So this is a good answer. The idea is you keep going, keep going, keep going. Otherwise, you can just make it nice and simple. You take your number and you divide by 1.6. Take the number, divide by 1.6. If you get a decimal number, your answer is correct. Let's try it, shall we? Minus 8 divided by, let's find out, minus 8 divided by 1.6 you will get 5. 1.6, you will get 5. Why did I exclude that 19, minus 19? Well, that's minus 19. Divided by that minus 19, they cancel. This minus 19 will cancel with that. This minus 19 will cancel, leaving me with just the numbers. So this is 5 electrons. So that's 5 electrons. This, I've already said, is 2 electrons, right? That's double of 1.6. Let's check 4.8 divided by 1.6. I get 3. That's 3 electrons. If I do 8.8, divided by 1.6, minus and plus, doesn't matter. That gives me 5.5, impossible. That's five and a half electrons. This is the one that is incorrect. Okay, so next we're looking at Coulomb's law, and it looks like we're going straight into the triangle question, which makes me think you will not get charges in a line. Will we? It looks like we won't. So let's go straight to it. In this case, we need to break it down into three steps. Uh, step one is to find, we're going to find all the forces and eventually the new final force, the, you know, the resultant. Right now, we have an A and we have a B and we have a C. We want to, in part A, force of B and A. So the force between these two, we can just go to the formula sheet. Let's hope we have that one. We do. Coulomb's law, electric fields, there's a force formula there, K, Q1, Q2 over R squared, and if you forgot the value of K, it's given to you, 9 times 10 to the 9, so you have that there, that's very nice, let's go back to the question, if I wanted to calculate this force, I can calculate this force, F equals, this I'll call it F1, whatever, K, Q1, Q2 over R squared, that is a K, Q1, oh, why am I writing it, who cares, it's already written, right? K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. 9 times 10 to the 9, multiplied by 6 times 10 to the micro. Micro is minus 6. And then we also have minus 3 times 10 to the minus 6. Absolute values only. We do not write the minus. This is a vector. For vector, we don't include the minus. We do vector addition to get the direction. Um, one thing you should note is micro is very important. This is always times 10 to the minus 6. And while we're at it, I'll remind you, milli is times 10 to the minus 3. And sometimes you will see nano. Nano is times 10 to the minus 9. Nano 9, that's an easy one. And maybe centi, since we're at it, times 10 to the minus 2. Or divide by 100. These are the, the key prefixes that you will need to know, just in case. They're most likely to come like this. Once you solve this, you will get 100, or in this case, 1 times 10 to the power of 2. So I have the first force. This force is 100. And you can see, if this is a plus, this is a minus, they will attract. So we have the first force going to the right-hand side. Then, a third sphere, positive 1.5. That will repel. This is a positive charge. He will feel force number two going that way. This is F1. This will be F2. Now, for part B, we need to see this force. It's related to these two charges. I have done A and B. Now I'm going to do A and C. So, same thing. F2, we will use K, Q, well, Q1, Q3 over R squared. I'll just name it 1, 2, 3. They have letters there, but that doesn't matter. Okay. What do we do? This and this. We will write that now. 
9 times 10 to the 9, 6 times 10 to the minus 6, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6 is given right here. Divided by their distance, 3 centimeters, centi, like I mentioned here, times 10 to the minus 2, or just divide by 100, 0 0.03, nice. Putting that into your calculator, you'll get 9 times 10 to the 1, which is basically 90. So now we have 2. We have 90 and 100, two forces. And this one is repelling, so we have two forces perpendicular to each other. It makes a little triangle, which they went ahead and solved over here, but let's, let's do it right underneath so we can see. I have these two forces. I have a force going up and a force going right. My resultant will go like that. This is vector addition that you have done way back in grade 9, maybe even grade 10 and 11, actually. It's something you should know. And if you didn't want to start from the upward force, you can start from F1. It doesn't matter. I can go right first, then I can do the up, F1, then F2. Who cares? Look what happens. You get this same direction. Why is that important for me? Well, I can find the resultant. I can find this by using Pythagoras. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. This might be A, this might be B. It doesn't matter. They both multiply or add each other. It's okay. And this is C, basically. So, C will be the square root of A squared plus B squared. And you can just go ahead and continue. And I'll just show you on the other side. They've already done it. Square root of A squared plus B squared. 100 squared plus 90 squared. And you'll get your final answer, 130. Just a reminder, your final answer should be bigger than the two answers here. The hypotenuse is the biggest side. So now that we've figured out the value, you can find the direction simply by going into tan of the angle. I'm not going to spend time on going through sine, cos, and tan. I can save that for another video. Directly, we will be using tan in this case. Tan opposite over adjacent. Tan, 90 over 100. You could just remember another shortcut. Tan, small number divided by big number. 90 over 100, small over big. That's another way to do it. And that happens every time. It just happens to be the case. So you'll be fine in this one. Uh, so what am I doing? I am moving on. This is the direction of the electric force. So now we're looking at the direction of a force acting on a particle here. This is a minus charge. We have a minus charge. This is a minus charge. This is a positive charge. Fine. This minus and this minus repel. So this will run away that way and I'll run away that way. They're going along that axis here. They're running away. These two will attract. So he will come forward and this one will come down this way. We're focusing on particle P. So you can see, again, vector addition. You can kind of see that it's going to be the resultant this way. If I take this arrow, do tip to tail method, just like I did above, you will get that. And this is correct, towards B in this case. Let's switch it up a little. Obviously, your exam won't be exactly the same. Maybe they'll change it. Maybe I will have a positive charge here. Maybe that's a positive charge. Maybe that is a positive and a positive. Maybe they're both positives. Let's see what happens now. This and this repel that way. This one will go that way. They will repel. This and this also repel. So that will go that way. Vector addition. Take any arrow, bring it to the other side, and draw it together, tip to tail. And you can kind of clearly see it's going to go up. In this case, I would pick A. So that's just another ex extra example for you. Over here, now we're having to see what we can find on the force of a charge field. This is the FEC formula. You won't be given this, of course, so you'd have to figure it out. You have a charge, Q. You have a, this one, force, which is over here. And then you have an electric field. You will check your formula sheet, and you will see force, charge, and field. Force, charge, field, this one over here. This is good. There is another formula for field, but this involves having a distance. There is no mention of distance over here. So this is the rule we would use. Not even this one either, because there's no V. So we can't use that, and there's no distance either. And this is potential energy, not electric field. And if you forgot, everything is here for you. So, fake. Let's do it. E is F over Q. You can do shift solve, rearrange. It doesn't matter. It's very self-explanatory. If I want E, I will just do this divided by this. If I want F, which is at the top, I will just multiply these two together. So this table should be easy enough to fill out yourself. I don't think I will need to go through that for you. Let's go through some more challenging questions. 
And we have a point charge located at this distance. Um, what is the electric field? Now we go over to some sort of distance. And look at that, it even specified four point charges. The electric field, four point charges. There is electric field strength is E. Let's use it, KQ over R squared. Nine times 10 to the nine, for some reason they decided to use 8.99 here. Doesn't matter, you can write nine times 10 to the nine. Multiply about that by four times 10 to the minus nine. They could have just written nano, but they helped you out by writing minus nine. Divided by 25 centimeters, so that's going to be um, 0 0.25, which is what we have here, squared. You'll get your final answer. 575. Nicely done. Next, in this case, we have four charges over here at the midpoint here. And now we're seeing what is the direction of the electric eld at O. Clearly, it's supposed to say electric field at O. So let's see what's going on. Electric field, let's just remind ourselves what that is. An electric field, if I have a positive, field lines point out in all directions. If I have a minus, electric fields point in in all directions. If I have a plus and a minus, they join together. If I put this plus, this is not really exactly accurate, but they'll, they'll join together. They'll go from the plus to the minus. That's kind of what would happen. Plus and a plus would uh, repel. Anyway, W, X, and Z, W is negative. X is negative. Z, no, are negative. Y is positive. What is the direction of the field at this point? So let's see. This one is going to be, well, it's going to be going from, from plus to minus, right? So it'll go forward like this. This is coming out in all directions towards this one. This is going in in all directions. You could have the field going in like this. It'll be coming out like this, but that's not important for us. We're just looking at this part. So coming out that way towards O and also being dragged in this way. However, we have a Z and an X as well. This is coming in like this, but this is also trying to come in this way. These two will actually just cancel each other out. So we don't even need to include them. Now, so at O, overall, we have two arrows pointing that way because this will join together. Oops, this will join together. Like I did over here. Uh, you could also say this will join here. You could say that, that we don't care about that. We're looking at all. At this exact point in time and the exact point in space, I should say, we have two arrows pointing towards W. I hope that makes sense. I can change it around a little to see if that helps. Let's change it around a little. Let's put a plus here, a plus here, a minus here, and a minus here. Over here, what's going to happen? Feel coming out, feel going in that way, in that way. So that way. This is coming out, that's coming in that way. This way, you can see now I have two overall forces. It will go straight down. This actually, now I just reminded myself, this, come, this came up in a previous exam before. Where would it go? And I've said it says towards the bottom of the square. I remember that. So anyway, that's just another example. If you need more support on any of these questions, let me know. I can make another video. I don't want this one to be far too long. Here, now, we're talking about magnetic fields. So what I will do is I'll stop this video here and make another one for magnetic fields.